Hi everyone, I hope you're ready to get lit with YA Lit. Grab your popcorn, sit back and relax. My name is Amanda Bentley. All right, so who's invited? So throughout this course of um, this course, I've gotten the experience to help build a community within our discussion posts. And from Between the Lines by Nikki Grimes, I wrote a post discussion post that talks about diversity. So diversity is something that's been growing in today's world and it is a topic that is vastly discussed, especially in the education department. Um, so as an educator, future educator, I believe that every student should have an equal chance at an education. So using many different point of views, um, it helps create a community of knowledge. It helps create a better understanding of one another. So we have to stop focusing on the differences in the backgrounds and we have to think of them as positive. So where someone comes from can shape them to who they are today. So we have to understand that, yes, we are all different, but we are all the same. We are all going through the same struggles and we make the same accomplishments, maybe not the exact same, but we are not alone. Um, we're all just trying to live in the same world and make a difference. So I asked the question, what does, what does diversity and inclusion mean to you? So Alexander Yacoub, wonderful response by the way, uh, RSVP'd with a reply to my post and uh, talked about seeing the differences as a positive rather than a negative. So when we like we don't treat someone a certain way for things that we can't change. And one of the biggest things that we can't change and that is talked about in diversity is their race and their culture. So where someone comes from, what color their skin is, that's something we cannot change. But what we can change is our attitude and how we treat those people. When we treat them a certain way, we treat them with inclusion, we treat them with respect. And one of the biggest ways to include them is to be able to accept them for who they are is what Alexandra Yacoub said. Um, another thing that I really liked was be aware. Be aware of the differences and know who they are. So when you are aware of those, then we can better accommodate to be able to include those people definitely into our classrooms as future educators. The next RSVP we had was Bailey Balderson. Uh, Bailey mentioned that people have different characteristics and circumstances. So Diversity is not just about your background and who you are, but it's also about what you experience growing up and becoming who you are. Um, I really loved how she mentioned you use diversity to strengthen knowledge. So one of the biggest things in the music culture that we talk about is, so our music in this general area in the United States is what we call Western music. So Western music is very classical, not classicals, but like our folk music is very classic. It's something that we're able to understand it's stuff that we're used to like going uh musical terms going from a one to a four so going from a dominant to a fourth chord so like here comes the bride something like that but when you get over into um china you're going to hear stuff that you're not used to hearing so when you hear that most people tend to be like oh that's weird i don't like that instead of embracing their culture and understanding their music. And one of the biggest things in music is understanding ethnomusicology and to be able to look at this music from an outside point of view. And that's how we learn from one another. And that's something that Bailey mentioned is when you use the diversity to strengthen your knowledge is when we can come together as a community to learn from one another and to be able to grow and strengthen our community and our diversity and include everyone that comes in. All right, let's arrange the party plan. So critical thinking part of my spoken project here. So we got into the hard truth. And when I was talking about the hard truth, it's hard to realize, I feel like everyone knows the truth, but when you, you wanna run from it, that's the tendency. But when you finally face the truth, it's not the truth that scares you, it's the consequences to recognizing the truth that is scary. It's what's going to come after now that you've admitted this problem and now that you've come to accept the truth. Um, so my sophomore year, I struggled really bad with mental health and my academics. Um, I had a lot going on. I was burnt out. I will say that. I had track going on. I was full-time working and a full-time student. I think that my fall semester, I had 22 credit hours, if I remember correctly. 
So it was a lot going on and I was busy and most days were 18 hour days and my professors didn't understand that. And that's okay because I don't like I don't expect them to understand my personal life. And so at the end of our sophomore year in the music department, we have this thing called a gate B evaluation. And the gate B evaluation is where it's just you and a room full of the music faculty. It's very private. And they talk about your accomplishments, your goals, how you've been. And essentially it comes down to, yes, you can move on this program. Yes, you can move on this program with a probation. Um, no, you may no longer be able to be a part of this program. So it's very hard, and I'm not sure if we're the only program that does that here at Mount Union. Um, it was extremely stressful mentally for me to be in that room and to hear the hard truths because I knew what it came down to, that I was running from it for so long because I wanted to make everything work, that it either comes down to getting rid of track and field, getting rid of working, or finding something else that might fit my lifestyle a little bit better. And it was so hard, I ended up quitting track um, the fall of my junior year. It was so hard for me to come to terms with that because I've been in track since seventh grade. So if you do the math, that's oh, nine, three, about seven years. And I guess if I would have done the math better, <laughs> seven years. And it's hard to come to terms with something that you've become a habit to. And once I quit that, that's when doors start opening up. So once you close a door, many open up for opportunities. I became more passionate in my studies. My academics improved. My mental health improved. My social life improved. I just felt like a better human being. And I wasn't sick all the time. And I wasn't stressed all the time. And it was hard, but I still make time to go and support my teammates. That Even though I'm no longer there, I'm still a part of something that I love. So moving on, I had to write a paper about this is where it begins. And it stems from the book, This is Where It Ends. So this is where it begins is looking at, to me, a more optimistic side point of view. So when you hit rock bottom, I believe that it gives you more room to grow. So people that have hit rock bottom, I love to see where they are at now and their accomplishments. Because when you hit rock bottom, you're going to set goals you're going to recite your positive affirmations and that's when you turn the negative into a positive and then you sprout and you truly spring into a new life. And I think when you hit rock bottom at your point of life is when you realize you need to close one door to be able to open another. All right, so let's get lit. So this is a poem that I wrote and when you listen to it, you're going to hear that I come from the country and I come from all these things. From perfume and makeup, I am from the trees in every shadow, tall, long, the sun can never reach. I am from daisies, known for my yellow center, often only picked for love me or not. I am from card games and adventures, from Amy and Jason. I am from playing and road trips, from never give up, and it's okay to close a door. I am from small town churches and knowledge of every veggie tales. I am from Ohio and the Bentleys, Hershey almond bars and barbecue chicken. From my sister's trip to the ER on the night of nationals because of me. From my brother leaving home far from the trees. In my long lost memories is a happy smile held dear by my inner child. I am from this music, intricate and subtle, playing to me as I rest my eyes. So as you can see, before we move on to the next slide, um, I'm not the only one who goes through those things. And that is something that I have really learned throughout this course is that while I may have thought that I had these family issues and I was the only one going through them or all these problems and how I'm the only one who grew up in a small town and I'm by myself it's hard getting out of a small town and I realize that I'm not alone with that and you just really have to reach big and I'm a really big advocate on my life is my own song. Um, I believe that everyone writes their own song just like um, everyone writes their own poem and I believe that is the biggest thing because once you write your own song you grow and you become who you are people are going to listen to that so moving on, so let's get into party favors, the importance of YA Lit. So YA Lit 
allows us to explore complex issues in a safe environment. So young adults, this is why it's so important is because we don't really get this experience and sometimes we get put in these bad environments and it kind of simmers down our critical thinking that we could be submerged to our self-awareness and just our gain of knowledge. So being able to explore these in a safe environment and learn through them through young adult literature is the utmost important. Not only that, but you get to explore your own identity, perspective, and voice. So throughout a few of these books, it was hard for me because I thought I was going through things alone. And when I realized that these authors were voicing things that they've seen or things that they wanted to bring to life for these young adults, really sheds light on these real world issues that are going on today. Another biggest thing is that young adult literature helps us understand the deeper connection to the world around us and allows us to grow as human beings and become prosperous and grow a community of knowledge.